Hello. For the last time, for a while, perhaps, I accidentally did the epilogue uh, last episode, as you guys have warned me, but I recorded this in a batch as such that it wasn't until after I had done it that I knew that I was dumb. Uh, and then everyone reminded me for a few days, hey, don't be dumb, and then I was dumb. Let's play some Hive Swap, and I'll get into the main game once it comes back. But uh, as a constant reminder, I'm going to have to say this, and I apologize. Make sure you're following me on Twitter and uh, social media, just in general. Uh, at Rev Scarecrow, uh, at Rev underscore Scarecrow, I should say, on Twitter. So that way, you know, when I'm, you know, putting out videos like these or anything like that, just being subscribed to someone and hitting the bell and uh, pledging your firstborn to YouTube is not enough anymore. Um none of those will guarantee that you will actually get a video that you subscribe for. So Twitter is the best way to find out when I'm streaming, when I'm posting videos, when I'm just being a dumbass. Um, it's, it's a good service for that for now. So follow me on Twitter if you haven't already and let's get into the game. I apologize for having to say that, but otherwise you just won't know. Still subscribe because it will let you know sometimes and it helps me, but, you know, I'm not going to dwell on it. So I accidentally already did this, I think, um, as you guys saw, because I did the them first. I guess you're supposed to do the left side, then the right side, and then that way it's right. I'll, I'll double check in a minute, and if there is something that I missed, or if there's another part of this, then there'll be another episode two days from now where that's a thing, but I kind of think I got it. Um, let's play this one. There we go. Um, he's got a Slytherin vibe, you know? Like, if I'm in any house as far as Hogwarts go, I think Slytherin? Because, like, I'm not, like, study enough for, like, Ravenclaw, Claw, and I, I don't feel like I'm enough of a stoner to be in Hufflepuff. And, um, you know, I like my friends, but I'm an introvert, so... Maybe not Gryffindor. So that just leaves me to be like crafty. And crafty is one thing I got going for me. I feel like that's right. Me and my, my fiance would probably end up in that house. Because they're not all evil. They just like figuring stuff out. It's a little bit of everything, you know? It's not like there can't be smart Gryffindors, right? I, why am I getting off into Harry Potter lore anyway? Let's do this one. What's next on the docket? Oh, you're really feeling like this is going completely off the rails. Yeah. So it's a good thing that the first person to ping you on your palm husk is Lindra. That nutty bitch is exactly the kind of destabilizing influence your life needs right now. Oh, okay. Random breakbeat, but sure. I haven't heard of breakbeat in forever. That used to be all over the goddamn place. I'm a sucker for breakbeats. Hello, my friend. Because that's what we are now, friends. Cool, that's not weird at all, way to talk to someone. You're really loving this one. Whatever, you're not uh, you're not sure what it is, but you're positively whatever... You're positive whatever crackpot caper this loopy troll is about to rope you into is going to be some real humdinger. There's a sense of finality in the air. You can taste it. L r l crazy bitch. This will do the courtesy of listening to you say all that shit without getting super put off by how freaked out you are. Listen up. So I was thinking that since becoming, uh, since us becoming friends hasn't worked out so well, I'm starting to think that maybe it'd be a good idea to give uh, making more friends another shot after all, I guess. That's what I was thinking. So there was this party I was invited to. You see, a few jades in my cloister already always sneak out to go to these things. I generally suggests a crazy bitch that she should hurry up, uh, hurry it the fuck up. Okay, I'm nervous. And I want to go and I want a friend to come with me. Okay? Is that so crazy? No, you don't think that's crazy at all. You just think that it sounds fantastic, actually. You don't ask for any details because who gives a shit? Hey, it's this map again. You show back up on the block and you're not really... Uh, you're not going to talk about how you got there or whatever because it's a waste of time. You're just there. Good, good writing. Honestly, let's be real. We don't give a shit. There could have been a wacky adventure there. But there wasn't. Linria met up with you too. 
She mentioned that there might be dancing, so you decided to really dress up for the occasion. Oh man, you went fucking nuts. You're wearing a cape and shit, and also like fishnets and maybe a sexy bra if that's your thing. Whatever happened to you happen to drudge out of some dumpster or another. Fancy bra, just in case if, you know, I don't know, maybe we get some action tonight. Take it off. You don't have the superhero thing going on where like the top half doesn't match the bottom half, you know? got one cohesive look the whole way through honestly you can even imagine whatever you want here but no it's complete bullshit and you look like a total slut she isn't wearing anything special because we would have had to pay someone to redraw all of her sprites this this chapter is like super not giving a shit about like the writing um from the looks of it you're headed over to somebody's hive party you're rolling up to some kind of joint that, from past experience, you can now surmise is an alien dos dom domicile. Dom domicile. I don't know why that word was hi hard for me. I'm just having a hard time wording today. It's pretty big. It maybe belongs to someone on the blue end of the spectrum. Back here again. Is this the block where all the jade-blooded schoolgirls love to get down and dirty? It hits you like a bucket of ice when you realize whose hive uh, you're walking straight towards this time. His art at us. Oh. This is just great. Your friend Art Data. Boy, do you love Art Data. You can't wait to see her again. Yep, can't wait to see her again. Uh. Th this line? He's just like, come on. Get, just like, k bump everything up just ever so slightly. He tried to fit too much shit in here. This, this episode's feel a little slapdash. I'm not gonna lie. As you approach, you can immediately tell what kind of deal they have going on here. You hear the tunes bumping from all the way down the block, and whenever you get near enough to see that there are obviously a bunch of teens passed out drunk on the lawn, this is a full-blown frat house rager. Yeah, I turn up the volume too loud on my music when I'm driving my car. So my, like, my thing has like a digital readout on where the level is, and so before Tilda gets in the car, I make sure I turn it down from like 30, back down to like a more reasonable nine so that way um when she starts listening to music wherever she's driving because we share a car uh she doesn't think that that's the reason i'm going deaf because you know she probably is listening to metal at 30 or 40 on a, a fairly decent but stock sound system and a honda civic is uh is not good for your ears i'm sure definitely doesn't seem like her sort of scene that's because it isn't? Oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm doing this. You kind of can't either. Uh, you're not even in the front door and you can already feel a sweat pouring from your armpits. This is going to be so much fun. You pass all the smashed lawn teens and go up uh, to the front door. You have to rap on it a few times until you hear the telltale sounds of clicking heels and faintly reaching your ears. Your hostess opens the door and that the gracious hostess is standing on the other side. It's none other than your best friend, Ardata. Woohoo! Yeah. I feel like this is very tongue in cheek because, like, yeah. like alien Logan Paul is is not high up on my list of friends or even favorite people in this universe. Also, look at the like the the drastic shift in like quality of drawing. Like this, she is. She's drawn all right. She's not the best drawn character, but she's drawn okay. But like, you can see some real sketchy lines here and there. And I realize it's multiple different artists, but I'm an artist, so I'm gonna be nitpicky about shit. Anyway, she looks surprised to see that see you for only a moment before her face resolves into a wicked grin. Oh, ha ha ha! My my my! Look what the pervies dragged in. Back for more so soon, my sweet. And I actually sure how much time has passed since you last ran into art at it but it doesn't feel like it can be described in any metric by soon you've been physically savage so many times since then that you're not even sure what you're blocking out though you tell our data you're really 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 glad to see her because you totally are you tell her that you weren't expecting her to be hosting a party though oh i don't know if i'd call it a party it's more like a friendly kickback of sorts Sort of exclusive, really. All the world's finest influencers are here. YouTube tip. If you call yourself an influencer, that gets you uh, marketing jobs where you can, like, you know, get 
sponsorship deals and shit like that. But if you call yourself a content creator, that means that YouTube steals your soul. Because fuck it. To both of those people, to, to both of those organizations, that you that's what you are. So how did you don't use those words is what I'm trying to say. Unless if you're using it to try and get a gig. In which case, you know, whatever. How exactly did you hear about my little shindig? Well, I certainly can... Uh, well, I certainly consider you one of my finest friends. I don't really recall inviting you. You gesture vaguely to... Crazy bitch. She doesn't seem to know how to lie. And immediately cracks under the pressure. Hmm. One of the other jades from my cloister told me to come. My name is... His name is Lang... Lenny, but I don't think he was invited either. I get the impression we always come out here. Basically, we're crashing if that's cool. Well, of course. Oops, back, back, back. Uh, what was it? Um, page up. What sort of informal soiree without a few uninvited interlopers? Lenry doesn't seem to know if she's being sarcastic or not, and you're not sure if she is either, to be honest. You're like... Are you fucking with us? And she's like, ho, 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 ha, 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 or whatever. Of course not. I just have one question for you, my dears. Our data beckons you near, and you obey her savage, savagely. She leans in close to your ear and intones. Do you hereby certify under penalty of law that you are aged to view adult content within your state legal residence and acknowledge the content of this volume's accompanying mature content description and are comfortable with the prospect of engaging with challenging or otherwise controversial fictional material? I got a message um, prior to doing this one that something, something weird happens in this one, so... Uh, this is my first pass at this. If I have to throw up, like, censorship kitten, I'll be surprised. Uh, so there's that. If you continue to watch this video, you agree to this shit, too. There we go. Uh, oof, you're scared. No, I, I'm in. Ha ha ha! Hee hee ho! That's good to hear. Why don't you come right in, then, my dear? I mean, it's like, it's a fucking frat party. There's some weird-ass shit that happens. I don't want you to see making any little posts online about how this party was too fucking problematic for you, though. There it is. Our data steps back and welcomes you again into our abode with a grandiose gesture. You're very, very excited for this episode is very on the nose with like the fourth wall like, breaks. It's just like we didn't want to pay someone to do the fucking art. You're wearing whatever the fuck because we don't care and don't give us shit for us writing fictional whatever stuff. Like, within the first 12, 13 minutes of this episode, we're already into that. Great. Our data steps back and welcomes you again into our abode with a grandiose gesture. You're very, very excited for our data's party. And you know definitively that you will enjoy absolutely every second of what she has in store for you. Once she, you've stepped past into the threshold, our data forces you a toxic kiss and saunters off into the mingle with her enthusiastic guests. First thing that hits you once you're in here is the door is the music. It's a solid wall of bass that reverberates your body down to your bones. That's how you know it's like good and loud where like you lack the ability to feel anything anymore because of how fucking loud it is. Hey, it's Damien. Damon, whatever his name is. He's got the hot door. He's got a hot dog friend. And he's not dead. This guy might be on the floor here. First thing that hits you once you're in the door is the music. It's a solid wall of bass that reverberates through your body down to your bones. An intense dance track is blasting so loud that you can hardly hear yourself think. It has to be this loud to drown out all the shouting coming from the living room. You apprehensively advance as it becomes quickly clear that Linra is completely out of her element here. She's a bundle of nerves besides you, uh, practically glued to your hip, which actually, when you actually step into the living room, she physically attaches herself to your arm. Wow, this is this is more than I was expecting. Yeah, maybe we should just go to like I don't know, like a off the main street sort of club or something, you know, like a dive bar. No, that's probably not good. Maybe let's just go to like a regular bar. 
You know, cops show up to those. You too. It's a scene of absolute chaos. The living room of the house is filled to the brim with rowdy teens, dancing rhythmically to the pounding music. The furniture has been knocked over and otherwise destroyed. You can make pretty good guess of what's filling all these red cups you see in everyone's hands. You're about to tell Linra if you wouldn't blame her if she wants to dip, but you can't get the words out before you're flagged down by a jade-blooded boy who's just muscled his way out of the throng of party goers with a few of his friends in tow. Linra, you made it. And a text. It's here. What is it? Why, it's my phone just buzzing for no fucking reason. Thank you, phone. I don't know why it does that. Maybe it's like my emails being like filled again. Because I need more emails. I think I have, what is it, 25,000 unread emails? Should probably delete some of them. 25,819 with 40 missed calls. I have my life together. Crazy bitch all but flings herself away from your body and freezes like a scared animal as the troll approaches. For all the commotion and ruckus, he's still remarkably well put together. A vigorous dance huddle doesn't seem to have disturbed his sharp makeup or impeccable coughed hair. Quaffed? Quaffed? Is that how you pronounce that? Quaff is when you drink something quickly. Coughed is... I guess that. Uh, there's a curious red stain down the front of his white shirt, though. He has a slutty-looking indigo bloody blood girl on his right arm, and an even sluttier-looking teal-blooded boy on his left, though he shakes them off with a wave uh, and waves them away by the time he reaches you and, and crazy bitch at the entranceway of the room. Hi, Lenik. Yeah, I'm here. You watch in amusement as crazy bitch practically bursts into flame under his gaze, and it's only getting worse when he sidles up to her and gives her a startlingly intimate embrace. She squeaks and tries to hug him back, but it's too timid to actually touch him with her hands. You can see sweat pouring down her face. After a solid five seconds, there seems to include Lenique smelling her hair, and that's creepy. That's weird. Like, I get you're trying to go for, the, like, the vampire thing, but, like, this is a frat party, and if you're just like, Oh, you smell pretty. That's weird. He pulls back the smile down at Crazy Bitch with a heavy gaze. Crazy Bitch's face is bright green and her eyes are bugging out of her skull from how flustered she is. But she's not, not into it, you don't think. It's hard to tell, but you kind of get the impression that he'd be dead right now if she weren't. Either way, it's awkward. Lucky for her, he doesn't seem to notice or care. It settles him into a comfortable, for him, posture with his arm casually around her waist and turns to you. Who's this? This is my, uh... Friend? Yeah. There was like several clicks there. I wasn't stuttering like normal. It was just, it, it, the game was stuttering. He quirks an eyebrow. You have friends? The question seems to leave her speechless. So he takes the opportunity to, I'm just going to read he and she because fuck trying to pronounce these names. I'm sorry if your name actually is Lanik or Lin, Linra. But that's good enough. Also, like this, the whiskey bar sort of uh, jazzy kind of thing is really like a sudden shift from the, like the like breakbeat thing at this party. It's weird. It takes an opportunity to look back at you. His eyes rake you up and down in your body that way that feels you distinctively objectified. Well, aren't you interesting? Is there any reason you look like that? What a question. He doesn't explain what that is specifically referring to, and given both your alien status and the state of dress, it could mean any number of things. It might take... You might take it as an insult, if not for the way that he licks his lips after he says it. You can't... Uh. Like, I know this is probably someone's type, but... Uh. 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 He can't seem to pry his eyes off of you. You look at her for some sort of cue, but she's too out of it to give you any sort of intelligible sign. So you just explain how you crash-landed on this alien planet in an intermediate amount 
of time ago and you don't really know anything about what you're doing or much about anything about anything. The fact that your appearance could be uh, either to this or that you're generally a disaster of being irrespective of your planet's or origin. How fascinating. I've never... So it's V's and W's that are capitalized. It's like things. I get that he's supposed... It's the, the vampire thing again, you know? I've never met an alien before. Well, you have plenty of times. In fact, literally everyone here is an alien to you. You find it kind of... You find your word diarrhea becoming more and more awkward and embarrassing uh, under his eyes and starts burning a hole in the center of your chest. There's no need to be so shy. I don't bite unless asked. Hmm. He disconnects himself from her as he rounds to you. It's like he's lost any interest in her existence now that you're in front of him. She looks at you with completely pathetic expression that readily informs you as to what your response needs to be. <coughs> You'll be damned if you aren't going to be the best wingman possible. Yeah, she is actually kind of smiling over there. So you definitely ignore uh, his blatant past and turn the conversation back to her. You ask how long he and her have known each other and he raises his eyebrow at the question I suppose since she was chosen for the cloister a number of sweeps ago I don't really remember it's 2.43 sweeps right then I guess that many I guess it's actually a pretty long time actually <laughs> yeah pretty impressive that you managed to go a solid 2.4 of them without saying a single word to me that wasn't circulated back to me second hand from your side gossiping behind my back Oof. Wow, talk about whiplash. Uh, her eyes got big like saucers. Uh, what, what? What? What are you? I don't even know what you're talking about. The tone of the conversation has totally morphed from fire to ice in an instant. Neither of you, though neither his expression nor demeanor have changed much. He slips in the knives with all the calm and composure of a casual statement. What, are you going to pretend that you didn't spend the better part of the past two and a half sweeps complaining about how much I disgust you? Come on now. You do know that everyone is aware you're a nasty little bitch, right? Oh. Wow. 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 Holy shit. Like, a crazy bitch is a bitch. I mean, I'm not going to say that straight to her face. Because she's not going to say that shit to my face, you know? You know, I, um, I, I mean, don't take this the wrong way. I really don't mind. It's hard. I'm hardly in a position to criticize. I was just curious what caused the sudden change of heart after so long of decrying my vain and slattenary love sty lifestyle. I don't, I, have you, um, have the impending ordeals finally made your little clock start to tick down in that dry, dusty nook of yours? Holy fuck, dude. Did you figure out that I was the only one who might be able, be loose enough to be willing to... Wow, holy shit, this guy's fucking savage. Just wondering. There's a long, excruciating moment where she says nothing, then she just stares up at him with her... with a complete shell-shocked expression. But before you can try and pipe up in her defense, she bursts into tears. Oh, oh no. When she suddenly turns and makes a mad dash to run out the front door and away from the party, you're torn between running after her and giving this jerk a real piece of your mind. Your mind's made up when you look back at him just in time to catch his eyes roll rolling his eyes. You say, that was kind of rude, don't you think? He snorts. Me? Rude? Are you perhaps attempting to fuck with me? Clearly you haven't spent much time around this bitter pill if you think that that was anything short of precisely what she deserves. I mean, like, she's kind of a bitch. I'm not going to lie. Like, and I mean that in the crazy way. Like, she tied me up to a chair once. It's like she doesn't exactly have, like, the highest points in my book. But it's been a minute, and I've forgiven her. Um, but damn. First impressions and all that, dude, right? I just met you. It's really hard to treat you not as an asshole. You can see that you don't have enough of a grasp of jade blood coister dynamics to make a definitive judgment on whether or not she deserved to have been so ruinously owned. But she is your friend. And what good are you if you don't stick up for the people you care about? I have no idea what even got her so upset. 
Like I said, it's not like I really care what she says about me, but you don't get to spend as much time as she does when such a venomous little snake, uh, being such a venomous little snake and then acting surprised when someone calls you out on it. I'll be honest, like some people have talked shit behind my back and, you know, like at one point, you know, may seem like it's worth it to like bring it up to them, but to another point, it's just like when they ask for shit from me, it's just like, nah, nah. Oh, come on. We're friends, right? What gave you that opinion? <laughs> what makes you think that shit? But that being said, like, God damn. That was unnecessary. Like, damn. All right. Why did you? Yeah, why? This is the guy that invited her? What the fuck is your damage, bro? Like, you don't even need to go to that fucking detail. Just don't invite her to parties. That's like the thing. It's like if someone shit to you, you don't have to invite them to cool parties you go to. And then they're like, well, shit, no one invited me. And then you're like, well, you kind of been a bitch to me this whole time. So why do you think I would have, you know? There's some people that like, I'm not inviting to some events that I've got coming up. And it's just like, well, because you've only been shit to me. I'm not inviting them and then having them like show up and be like, ah, oh, shit, actually, you guys, you're not, you're not invited. The fuck is that? Why'd you invite her, you ask? Seems needlessly cruel of him to lead her on under the false pretenses if he never intended to be friends with her at all. I promise you I had no such designs. The only reason I even invited her uh, to this thing is that my ex is being a real blood-sucking bitch and no one else wanted to go. Hey, maybe... Maybe she's talking shit behind your back because... Because you're shit. I was willing to give her an honest shot, but I have no time for a vicious slandering nag who can't even admit to what she is. Thought it might be interesting to see what crusty little shrew might be like if you could manage to rest her bulge free of whatever excruciating knot she's got it tied into, but I guess we'll never know now. Well, this is clearly a conversation you're going to have to go to Switzerland out of pretty soon. What? Try and explain the historical significance of Switzerland's political neutrality on your home planet. His eyes glaze over like he's listening to recite the sports almanac of cricket stats. That's nice. Anyway... I seem to have scared away to my date. D she's your date? Like, holy fuck. Just go lone wolf into the party if that's how you're going to treat your date. Damn. So why don't you stay a while so you and I can get to know each other a little better? You seem more interesting than she is anyway. When you, When did he get so close to you? Your heart beats a little faster when he smiles at you like that. So poisonous and shamelessly laced with intent. He is definitely not, or she is definitely not the only one coming off like a snake here. I've got no time to waste on that. My, mo I've got less time to waste than most, my dear. Never seen the value of beating around the bush. Maybe it'd be socially prudent for you to go after her to make sure she's okay but it's not her volume of friends to him so instead of that you decide to stick around and see what the spectacular bribery prima donna is all about you had your fucking chance to bail out of this shit sh no i didn't there was no prompt fuck you game fantastic care to dance why the fuck not why the fuck would i he laughs pleasantly and reaches out to take you by the hand and contact gives you a little thrill despite yourself He's got nice hands, soft, warm, well taken care of. You know it's going to be one hell of a ride wherever he's taking you. Come with me. You do. He doesn't lead you straight to the dance floor, though. He takes you around the throng of party girders over to the kitchen of the house first. You weren't expecting to find a familiar face waiting for you there. Fancy meeting you here. Good. It's nice to have someone who's fucking normal here. Is this the same party that we went with the uh, goth chick that we, like, walked away from? No, that was at her house. So she went to two parties this week. Damn. You don't find it that surprising, honestly. You know, two know each other? You can say that. That's great. Do you give discounts to friends? I sure fucking don't. 
You know the price, pretty boy. Play, pay up. Hmm. You're a little confused. What is being purchased here exactly? Oh, where it gives you a funny word. Look. You have drone? What? Hush. You do as you're told and watch Lenique and Elward carry out their shady transaction. Lenique hands over the credits and receives some opaque little baggie of something in return. We're having this kind of party. <sighs> oh, well, you guess you didn't really need to see what was going, what's in that thing to figure out what it is at this point. As soon as the deal is done, Lenique has... A, has his hand back at your back and is definitely guiding you away from the scene of the crime. Is buying drugs a crime here? Yes, because she asked if you were a fucking cop. You're really well versed about the laws of Alternia, but it honestly doesn't seem like much that anybody won't give, uh, doesn't seem like anybody would give too much of a shit about anyone doing drugs out here, unless if you're, and you guess the clandestine transaction or just for the aesthetic. He's got you back in a shady corner of the party and pressing one of the tablets he bought into your hand with a sly grin. He expects you to join in. You're like, uh, hold on a minute. Your experience with alien drugs haven't been that great, honestly, and you're not sure you're excited for a repeat of performance. His immediate response is to sneer. Oh, I see. You're one of those people. One of what people? You know, a bit boring, maybe? Okay, like, but we don't really know how this is going to happen, like, what it's going to do to me biologically. You know? Like, koalas can eat eucalyptus trees, which is straight-up fucking poison. And the reason they get away with it is because they're too fucking dumb to care. My point is that if I eat a eucalyptus tree, then I'll be fucking stupid because I'll be dead. It doesn't work the same. If this, if this fucks with you, and you can bench press a car, it might kill me. There's so many words that could be used to describe you, but you don't think boring is a remote contender. You're always doing some kind of unbelievably stupid shit and getting into uncountably wacky and life-threatening situations. Is this... Is it really that fucking much to ask that for there to be one time that you don't rush headfirst into doing something you don't know what the fuck it is totally awful? His lips press into a thin, annoyed line. Those things aren't cheap, you know. I bought them for you. Well, you didn't ask him for him to do that, did you? Come on! You really gonna be like this? Yeah. He sighs dramatically. Fine. Lenny casts around for the nearest victim and grabs his attention with his hand around his lips or his wrists. I don't know where I went with that, but alright. To your dismay, it's the sweet and innocent hot dog chum Damien. Alas, there's nothing to stop him. He's right there and there. There's nothing that you could do to stop him from falling prey to Lenique's wicked design. Have these. Oh yeah, great! Thanks! I love putting drugs on my wiener. That's gonna be clipped and used out of context, I'm sure. Okay, well... That's fine. He wanted drugs. What a tragedy, but before you know it, Lenny has a hold of you again and is dragging you off. Let's just dance. You're not too much of a square to do that, are you? Of course not. Dancing is basically the one thing that you actually plan to come here and do. So that's actually just great. It, you go along with Lenique enthusiastically when he pulls you over to a writhing mass of bodies bumping and grinding on the dance floor. You get down with it and discover that Lenique has a very interesting dancing style. And by interesting you mean it primarily consists of distinctly grinding his body against yours in an incredibly shameless faction. But pressed in as you are from all sides by sweaty inebriated bodies, you're not exactly much room for trolls, troll Jesus to begin with. Uh, Lenik is up on you so close that it's hard not to sweat. He has his hands on your hips and your face fixed with a sharp eye, with sharp eyes. His heavy stare is nearly hypnotic, so blatant and undisguised in his expression. It's clear what he wants, and maybe more than you're prepared to give, but when he looks at you like that, it's impossible to look away. You just go with it. Why not? It feels good, and it's not like anyone else is watching. Except for a couple uh, decent number of homestucks that are listening to me read about a really shady, shitty guy grinding on my ass. But, you know. You're surrounded by trolls, boxed in, pouring sweat, and yet it feels like you're the only two people there. He draws in, teeth by your ear. And this close, you can hear him easily, over, even over the overwhelming pound of the bass. You have the palest skin I've ever seen. You tell him that you're literally f, -f, 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 -f white. That's like hexadecimal. 
which is like blank, makes you super radically inoffensive, FYI. You let Lanique know if he uh, can see any, he can see you any way he wants, which is even more woke than making a decision. Then his paper. I can see all the way inside of you, all your veins and red blood. You smell like candy. Wonder how you taste. Oh, he's one of those, he legit is a fucking vampire. Also, what the fuck with the art there? That's a weird look. Like, rainbow drinkers are a thing, right? That was a thing that was addressed in, like, uh, I forget which chapter it was. But that's, like, a thing. Um. Huh. I mean, like, honestly, like, we always have, like, these, like, you know, Dracula-esque thing where he's got, like, the fucking castle and he lures women in and then he, you know treats them all like nice ish and then it turns into like him sucking out their blood um that feels like a modern interpretation of that which really just makes it all the more creepy i've went to parties where there were people who were self-professed vampires um interesting parties to say the least um <laughs> wow, that's like some shit a vampire would say. Presuming I'm a rainbow drinker would be awfully reductive in literal reading of my character. But am I wrong? I'm just making a blatant sexual pass. Oh, okay, good. Uh, glad you cleared up that thing. Um, as an opportunity to really let loose. Uh, glad you got that all cleared up. You take this as an opportunity to really... Let loose, showing off everything that you got in this sexy dance acumen department. Lanique is a little bewildered. What are you doing? You're like, what aren't you I doing? There's a fire on the dance floor and you struck the match and you're getting fuck uh, up in here. Really getting it, breaking it down, bopping and crumping and whatever. That was like, hmm. You're smashing your ass into everyone around here and you're getting hot and heavy with those lusty moves. There's a point where Lanique has to stop back, step back and presume to properly behold your art in all of its glory. But as soon as it becomes clear that it's not your prodigious glancing skills that has given him a pause, you followed by a startled gaze as you see his cause for alarm. Bronia is here and she looks fucking pissed. Oh shit. Bronia is standing there in the entryway contending with our data and it looks like she hasn't caught sight of you yet. But Lanique isn't wasting any time. Before you realize what's happening, Lanique has you by the wrist and is hauling you away from the dance floor and off into the hallway. Lanique finds safety in the bedroom. Respite block. You remind yourself when you take stock of the conspicuous absence of any bed and presence of a revolting looking slime cocoon, which trolls allege to spin their repose. With the way that was written, where he was like basically like insulting her and her downstairs mix up. Um, it implies that trolls fuck like normal people and not just like a cum bucket where everyone just collectively jizzes into it until it works out. Which, come to think of it, kind of confuses me about like why. Wait, how the fuck do trolls breed again? Feels like an eternity passes. You hold your breath held, the sound of blood rushing in your ears, almost enough to drown out the music. Seconds turn into minutes, and nobody comes to find you. Seems for now you've escaped Bronia's notice. She's legit, though, and if this guy isn't chill with her, something's wrong. When you turn your head back to look at Lenique, you find that he's been staring at you for some time. I haven't taken your my eyes off you since the moment I first saw you. You're just so interesting. You freeze like a hare standing, staring down a snake. Lenique lifts his hand and brushes a thumb across your cheek, fingers curled against your chin. Your eye, you meet his eyes. His pupils are so black. Want to know what it'd be like to kiss you? He's used that set of lines before. Lenique's tongue darts out of his wet, painted lips. You want to kiss me? Whoa. Wait. I already clicked on at least two mature content disclaimers to get this far, so why the fuck not? Did I? I feel like I clicked on one, and then I've continued, so... I mean, this is as heavy as it gets, but it's not. We're in a bedroom. It's a shady party. 
I'm gonna get fucked. Lanique leans in and presses his lips against yours. His kisses are more sweetie, sweetly than he looks. His lips are soft and wet and taste like blackberries. This beats making out with some, uh, with a couple of greasy teens behind a dumpster, that's for sure. When one of his sharp fangs nicks your bottom lip, you don't even care. But when a drop of your blood beads into his invasive tongue, Lenique drops back just an inch. He tastes sharp and dangerous, like a weapon. Is that a good thing? It's not a bad thing. Lenique pulls back further and he starts to slip your... <sighs> from his... Takes his hand slips from your cheek and his fingers trail down your neck to your collar, thumb brushing against the thrum of your pulse. Have you ever repaled before? Lenik shrugs off his jacket and starts unbuttoning his shirt. Whoa, 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 is this really going there? You're not like, well, no, but you've never done any intercourse with a bucket. It doesn't look like he's even has one on him at the moment that apparently is the wrong thing to say because Lenny's face scrunches up into displeasure. Don't mock me. It's my first time. You'd figure laughing would constitute mocking him, so you don't. But the look he gives you seems to say enough. Like, I mean, I feel like that's a line. I feel like that's a fucking line. You know, that's a thing you say where it's just like, listen, I'm not some guy who's gonna use and abuse you. Like, I'm this is my first time. You know? This guy, this guy. This guy's a fucking piece of work, that's for sure. Us jades who live in a cloister have been chosen for a very special duty. We're expected to adopt and chase and uh, a chast and ascetic life in the service of the continuation of our species. When we undergo our ordeals, we're sent off world. There's no such thing as sneaking out of the caverns. If I don't do this now, then when? My life's nearly over. We hope me feel alive. Did I miss a screen there? No. Before you can answer, Bronia's voice starts to rise shrill above the heavy music. Lanique! Lanique's hands shoot out at lightning speed to draw you close. Before you can so much as gas, he presses one of his palms over your mouth to keep you quiet. Oh shit, she's close. And from the sounds of it, she's getting closer. Lanique! I know you're here. You need to come out. You need to come home right now. Bronya, I'm getting her, and um, there's the cowboy, or cowgirl, I guess it is, chick with the, the lassie dog, and then there's um, the jade blood that's like, we have a list of things that we have to do. One, go fuck yourself. Two, die. That's what I figure he'd say to this guy. Shh. What will you do? Um... It's it's not that it's problematic enough. It's just like, I don't believe a fucking word this dude says, you know? And vampire isn't really my type when it comes to dudes. And again, straight, so I don't really have a type. But like, you know what I mean? Like... I don't know. I, I, got, a, I got a feeling that this guy is a piece of work. You rip Lenique's hands off your mouth and start yelling for her. What the fuck, dude? Lenique tries to scramble away from you and makes some sort of last-ditch effort to escape, but there's no use. Also, this is fucking revenge for, like, that shit earlier. He's just a piece of work. You know he's just a fucking player, you know? He's not, he's not good people. There's no use. Bronia hears you and comes running in furious. She holds the locked door off its hinges before you can even get up to let her in. You duck, flying as chunks of alien architecture and scuttle off to avoid whatever you fear might be further alien fists. Lenique? As angry as her voice is, some of the fury goes out of her face the moment she lays eyes on Lenique's state of partial undress. She reflexively brings a hand up to shield her eyes. What in the world? Put your clothes back on right now, this, right this instant, young man. Lenique freezes where he stands, apparently accepting that he's been caught. And there's nowhere left to run. If he doesn't intend to fling himself out a window, a uh, sneer uncoils from his face. The police saved the Purity Act. Like this is anything you haven't seen a dozen times before. Bronia's face goes bright jade. What? What in the world are you implying? I would never. Forget it, Linya. you are always the, been the craziest bitch in the whole cloister. You know you aren't actually our lusses, right? 
Vronia marches right up to Lenik and slaps him hard across the face. Lenik makes an undignified noise as he recoils from the blow. It looks like that really hurt. His face starting to is stinging bright under the handprint. He forces out a strained laugh. My word, Bronya. If all you wanted if you wanted to join us, all you had to do was ask. Damn, you wish I had some popcorn right now, cause it's kinda just sit back and take it all in. Lenique's instinctive er uh, invective has apparently desired effect. Bronia is all but steaming at this point, hands balled into fists at her size. You kind of want to say hi to your friend, but she's a little preoccupied, it seems. I'm not going to rise to your petty baiting. I know you're wrong in the wrong here. One, we've spoken time and time about recklessly sneaking out to these parties, and now you're dragging Linera into your mess. Two, she told her about all the things that have been saying and doing to her. It's completely unacceptable. You've had more than enough lectures about the way you treat flush quadrant partners, and it absolutely needs to stop. You are coming back with me to the cloisters right now. When we get home, we're going to have a serious talk about this. And if there aren't changes, there are going to be consequences. Just leave them out to get cold or some shit. Eventually, Bronia's overbearing hollering seems to finally break Lanique down. He sighs, shoulders slump, and rolls his eyes. Fine, fine. Bronia crosses her arms indignant as she waits for Lanique to finish fixing his clothes. Lanique buttons his shirt and puts back on his jacket and his tie, and then he seems to go retrieve his palm husk, which he seems to have discreetly slid over to where you're standing. Mmm. Wow. Wow. Holy shit. He casually saunters his way over, and instead of picking up his own device, snatches yours out of your hand. Hey, I gotta go. But let me give you my chitter information. Maybe we can pick off where we left off later, sweetheart. Bronia stomps over to grab Lanique by the ear and drags him away, but not before you finish putting his chitter contact info into your palm mask. He shoves it back into your hand and mouths, See you later. And then is fully hauled out of the room. Hypocrite. You need to shut your mouth, and they're gone. Friendship accomplished, you guess? Chitter mutuals. Do you want to understand? Uh, I mean, I already said yes to this. So, no. I think that just takes me to the epilogue, right? I'm going to go ahead and click on the epilogue real quick. Um, I know some people are, like, up in arms about that. But, I mean, like, honestly, maybe I, I chose the safe option. But um, he just seemed like a piece of work. Like, from the get-go. You know? Like, I know that snake in the grass kind of look is some people's thing, but Jesus Christ. <sighs> I don't know. And then this just this just brings me to this situation. Yeah, okay, cool. So then that that's it for now. I'll probably do I'll probably do a uh, stream of this where I, uh, you know, fix up the routes I didn't finish for instance the wrestling chick I forget her name already but the, the one I did the Randy Savage voice the the most recent Randy Savage voice person apparently the uh bad end is exceedingly better than the good end I got which is okay um so I need to do that one and probably a few others which ones I don't remember but um yeah oh uh, um Either way, I hope you enjoyed this. I will be back with the remainder of Hive Swap and uh, definitely uh, going to try and squeeze in a stream of me doing this with uh, you guys just telling me which ones I need to do. We'll see. But anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, let me know. If you didn't, let me know. Uh, I will see you guys next time. Don't be a shit to people. And uh, bye.